Welcome to Security Token Insight, brought to you by the Security Token Academy. The security token industry is here and will provide a key foundation for the evolving financial internet. The Security Token Academy provides insights about this new era for security token enthusiasts, investors, and issuers. The security token industry is here and you can get involved. Hi, I'm Adam Chapnick. And I'm Amy Wan. Thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's episode of Security Token Insight, in your security token investing news, we'll take a look at STO growth in the first quarter of 2019. We've got an interview with Henry James, the co-founder of FinCross International. We'll also sit down with the CEO of Tokensoft, Mason Border, for a look at the company's latest news, plus details on the Security Token Academy's meetup this summer in London. That and more is coming up on this episode of Security Token Insight. Now it's time for your security token investing news. Recent data analysis by Inwera found STOs increased by 130% in the first quarter of this year. According to the 28-page report, 47 STOs took place. That's a 130% increase over the last quarter of 2018. The United States led the way with 11 STOs in the first quarter of this year. The top performing industry was trading and investing. There is a link between space and security tokens. AmbiSafe is launching a new STO that will allow users to buy and hold SpaceX stocks as tokens. AmbiSafe's new fund will purchase the shares in advance and then tokenize them. 10 USPX tokens will equal one SpaceX token. SpaceX is not a public company, so these tokens will provide an opportunity for those to invest who are interested. This is one of the first examples of tokenizing stocks. We'll give you an update on future shows on how this pans out. And in other news, those holding Series A preferred shares of Overstock received a letter from the company about an upcoming change. The shares are transitioning to security token trading platform T0. T0 is a subsidiary of Overstock.com. Overstock will need to issue new shares, and the company must receive approval from the shareholder. These shares will not be subject to restrictions on ownership and will be tradable on T0. By the way, T0 is a gold corporate member of Security Token Academy. To learn more, go to our website, securitytokenacademy.com, and click on the directory tab and the corporate member homepage. The Security Token Academy attended Crypto Invest Summit in downtown Los Angeles last month. The event attracts security token and crypto enthusiasts from around the world. The Security Token Academy team was there interviewing some of the biggest names in the security token industry. That's right. Amy and I also had the privilege of moderating panels at CIS. We met a lot of great people who were excited for the future of security tokens. I was lucky to find time to chat with the co-founder, deputy CEO, and chief strategy officer of FinCross International, Henry James. FinCross International is a regulated investment bank leveraging proprietary banking infrastructure to provide new investment products and financial services to a diverse group of clients. Let's learn more about the company's expansion plans into Hong Kong and the latest on the STO market in Asia. Take a look. For everybody who hasn't heard of FinCross yet, tell us uh, what you are and how you came to be. Sure, FinCross International is a digital asset focused investment bank. Um, we've come about uh, from two co-founders, myself included. My background's in investment management and trading foreign exchange. Uh, so really the entry for us was came thanks to the crypto market, the volatility of the crypto market. Uh, we, we had the plan to launch a crypto hedge fund and we were then identified by officials in Mauritius, the beautiful island of Mauritius, uh, to launch an investment bank um, that could take full advantage of regulatory frameworks for digital assets um, from their jurisdiction. So, so that's where we are. For the last two years, we've been building the company together. We've onboarded a um, senior leadership team based on bankers, uh, people that are very experienced in the securities world as well. And of course, now with the emergence of the security token market last year, um, this is really the, the key market for us to, to kind of penetrate our market um, and our target audience in, in the US and Asia. So you do, you have a, an interesting niche because there's not a lot of companies that portray themselves as digitally focused investment banks. How does that make what you do uh, unique? Sure. I mean, in the market today, we like companies like Galaxy Digital, um, Diginex out of Hong Kong, uh, Ciber is another one of our peers in Switzerland. 
And these are banks, uh, sorry, excuse me, investment banks that are focusing on, on digital assets. Um, how we vary is that we're actually producing a lot of our own proprietary technology because we believe that an investment bank dealing with digital assets has to be able to uh, rely on its own technologies to deliver on the um, the trading and the liquidity, pr uh, the, the production of liquidity for product products in this market. Um, so you know, really, um, we are we're joining that 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 group of great companies. Um, like I said, we're at HQ in Mauritius, but. Our management team is currently spread across the US, uh, the UK and Dubai, and with a view also to launch a branch in, in Hong Kong later this year. So uh, maybe a silly question, but are, will you be able to do deals everywhere or do you have certain jurisdictions that you're able to operate? Well, basically our investment banking license in Mauritius doesn't limit us to where we can do business. But naturally in certain markets, uh, let's say like in the US, obviously for us to sell security tokens, we'll have to either work with a broker dealer or mm -hmm. acquire a broker dealer license ourselves. So we're in the process of doing that right now. We're just right now activating our investment banking license in Mauritius. We received an approval for that license in November last year. and. Um, uh, kind of from this period moving forwards, we'll start onboarding clients for the first time. Got it. Now, we've been talking about sort of your travels, and you've got a really unique insight from your global focus um, to how people are responding or the different appetites for security tokens and, and being involved in the space from different places around uh, the world. What are you seeing in Asia in particular uh, from maybe both sides of the deal? Yeah, so... Um, I think that you know the security token market is being driven from an innovation standpoint here in the US. Um, the Asian markets are kind of just a little bit a wait and see approach. Let's let's watch the Americans do this mm -hmm. and uh, and then kind of catch on once we see some momentum coming out of the US. But that said, they are still very sophisticated, understand the market um, well, and the potential for this market. We all identify that the security token market is going to dwarf the size of the cryptocurrency market, and that sentiment is, is felt also in Asia, where crypto is very popular and probably more popular than it is here in the States. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we've spoken with, um, you know, multi-billion dollar asset managers in, in Asia with mandates to buy security tokens now. Um, I think, you know, they're still exploring what kind of products they want to buy, but they do see it as a means to have greater and wider access to investment products um, in different parts of the world, which otherwise through traditional markets would be harder to, to access. Is there any type of asset that they have a predilection for? Are they most interested in real estate or something else? Real estate is up there. It's real estate. Real <laughs> estate is up there. Um, but um, but not, you know, it's not limited to that. You know, we found there's, there's two kind of trends that have emerged from the groups that we, we've spoken to around the world that are interested in security tokens. Mm -hmm. One trend is from institutional investors that are looking for more complex products, products that they can't buy and access through traditional markets. Uh, in other words, they're looking for a new investment product and with, let's say, IRR of like 20%. Mm -hmm. So it's high, it's a high it yield high. product. So uh, whereas on the other hand, there's another client segment that's emerged and their trend there is um, an investment mandate that is focused more on what I like to coin the vanilla security tokens, mm -hmm. maybe real estate backed or precious metals backed or mm -hmm. even oil backed, right? Mm -hmm. If people want to buy and access oil, trade oil, it's quite difficult for them to do that. So I think um, these kind of products appeal more to family offices and high net worth individuals. Um, and, and, you know, they're in, they have a different investment thesis. These guys are in the game of wealth preservation. Yeah. And, uh, and the fund managers, of course, institutional guys are here to, to make some good returns. So. You're talking about these, there's something interesting you had shared with me earlier about these vanilla opportunities and sort of what the strategy is behind them. Can you talk a little bit about what you learned? Yeah, okay, I know what you're, I know what you're asking me <laughs> for here. So, um, yeah, when we probed a little bit deeper and we yeah. asked these groups, you know, why do you want these, these vanilla products, which you can buy in, by the way, much more liquid markets through traditional markets today, uh, why do you want to buy them in the form of security token? And their view is they're taking a medium to long term view and saying once liquidity does come to this market, we will have the ability to trade asset for asset via the security token market. And that's huge. And I think that's a, that's a movement, an investment movement that's going to resonate also with millennial investors uh, as the whole market um, uh, grows and matures over the coming years. Yeah, I, I think that's very exciting because I hadn't heard that yet. And the idea that it's these that it's what sounds like an innovative thing to do, but from the most conservative in investors, yeah. that's kind of mind blowing and exciting because it 100%. means people are deeply understanding the space. Uh, and that to me is an indicator that it's going somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. And like, like we said, these are kind of um, investment mandates with completely different 
um, um, needs and objectives. Yeah. Uh, these guys are here to try to reduce their exposure to cash with their reliance on cash and sovereign currencies. They want to protect themselves in case of um, uh, recessions, regional you know, invest, uh, recessions in different parts of the world that may affect uh, themselves. Uh, and they, what they see the security token market as being a market where they can actually start hedging some of their positions and diversifying their portfolio in a more efficient and cost-effective way. We have the full interview with Henry on our website. Be sure to check it out. FinCross International is a gold corporate member of the Security Token Academy. Speaking of FinCross International, the Security Token Academy is honored to host its first London meetup in partnership with FinCross. Join us on Wednesday, June 12th from 6 to 9 in the evening at the illustrious 12 Hay Hill Club for an evening of networking, insightful discussion, food and drinks. Admission is free. You can find all the details on our website, securitytokenacademy.com. Also at CIS, I had a chance to catch up with Mason Borda, the CEO of Tokensoft. Tokensoft is a primary issuance and compliance platform enabling the issuance and distribution of tokenized securities. Automating compliance requirements is no easy feat. However, they are doing just that at Tokensoft. Let's learn more about that and more in this expert interview. For everybody who doesn't know Tokensoft, even though we had a great interview with you a little while back, why don't you just sort of give us the quick one-two on what is Tokensoft and why did it come to be? Uh, yeah, so, uh, well, uh, we, we really came to be because uh, there were issuers out there in the market looking to issue digital assets on the blockchain, and we started the company to help them comply with the applicable regulations, whether it was uh, things like banking, securities, or tax laws. And we do so either domestically, so we can help them comply with domestic regulations, or comply with regulations in the jurisdictions that they're offering in. So our, larger our largest client we're helping comply in 56 countries with their local regulations, and we automate things like that. When they go to uh, subsequently issue the, the digital asset, um, we also help uh, with the enforcement of the compliance requirements as these uh, tokens transfer on the blockchain as well. Amazing. Okay. So now that people kind of get what you're up to, we're, you know, here among all kinds of crypto know-it-alls and try-it-alls. And what are you hearing or what are you seeing out in the world that's interesting to you these days? Yeah, so I think uh, coming into 2017, there were a lot of startups that were issuing these digital assets. Mm -hmm. And uh, through, through 2018, it was sort of a little bit of the same. We also start to, started to see a lot of experimentation with institutionals. And that's the one thing that we're seeing consistent in 2019 is uh, there's a lot of uh, institutions taking a look at the space, looking at different pieces of infrastructure that they need to stand up to start issuing digital assets on the blockchain. And um, there's a lot of activity in that space that we're seeing. Interesting. So institutions in this space are interesting because they actually are on both sides. They're, we've seen uh, you know, funds that are tokenizing and we've also, you know, the kind of the holy grail that people are talking about is what's it going to take to get the institutions in yeah. to start investing? Um, which side are you seeing movement on or both? Yeah. So we, we really sit on the infrastructure side, the technology side. So uh, it's, it's really with folks that are or institutions that are seeking to build their own infrastructure mm -hmm. and to build it within their rules and their compliance requirements. Got it. And that's, that's one thing that we're seeing is people don't want to follow other people people's rules, they want to follow their own rules. <laughs> Especially in crypto, right? I yeah. think that, that's always <laughs> been. So what's a, what's, an, what's a use case for an institution that wants to kind of implement things that you're doing? Where, what's the most popular or a, a attractive part of what you're doing to them? Yeah, so um, I think the, the technology is still very obscure to a lot of yeah. major institutions. Uh, if you look broadly in the market, there's not too many blockchain developers. Yeah. Right. There's not a lot of uh, schools or universities out there that are training developers to uh, code on the blockchain. It's true. And so I think that's one of the things that we're seeing is the domain expertise is very interesting to them. And so they're coming to us looking uh, for that type of domain expertise so they can package this infrastructure within their own requirements. Got it. And what's that going to help them do better now that they have you baked in? Yeah, so that, that's really hard for me to say. Uh, <laughs> from my perspe perspective, we're still in the experimentation stage. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's institutions that are seeking to figure out what is valuable about building on the blockchain. You know, why should I 
build infrastructure on the blockchain and what are the efficiencies that I gain. Um, I do think there are a lot of efficiencies on the compliance side in particular. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing that we've seen uh, with, with our own uh, existing clients is that um, we've been able to automate a lot of the compliance requirements when it comes to transferring these assets from one jurisdiction to another yeah, or to onboarding amazing. investors within these complex, this complex web of regulatory requirements. Do, now this may be a silly question, but you said you have one case that had 50 different jurisdictions, yeah. is that right? Yeah. So does that mean you guys have to take 50 different regulatory sort of regimes and bake different rules yes. for each thing? Oh. Every single one. So yeah, so our, our platform automates that, and right. so as these. But to make it automated, somebody over there had to code every single one of these in. It was very painful. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think it would be. That sounds painful. I'm glad yeah. that was you and not me. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. um, what what sort of um, hiccups did you guys encounter in trying to make that possible? Uh, so on the tech side, um, our our platform we designed to be very configurable. So we literally have a different front door for every country. Uh, the fun part is, even within those countries, different types of investors have to be treated differently, whether oh individuals, boy. institutions. Um, and so those were some of the challenges that we saw. But yeah. uh, then on the regulatory side, the regulations change per country. So it might be legal to issue a digital asset in a certain country one month, and then the next month the uh, government comes out, or the regulators come out and say some negative things about Bitcoin or security tokens. Oh my gosh. And so, so the same place, real time, is changing its rules. Yes. Oh so, my lord, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, so we're finding ourselves having to update these rule sets and these <laughs> and these compliance requirements in real time as they change. Wow. So is that a service that you provide to all of your clients that you're gonna update, you're gonna watch the news and like <laughs> as they evolve their regulations, you're gonna bake that into an existing token or do they have how does that work? So yeah, so uh, as a uh, company that helps issuers follow their compliance requirements, we're definitely very paranoid about <laughs> uh, putting them out of compliance. Right. So when things come into play like GDPR yeah. uh, went into effect in, in May of 2018, we did get all of our, uh, our whole platform into compliance with GDPR and get all of our clients as a result into compliance at the same time. Wow. And it's just something we do just because you know, it's our job to make sure that our clients are following their compliance requirements. You know, it's funny, we have spoken to uh, not a few companies that do similar work yeah. to what you do, but that has never come up, that there's this <laughs> ongoing paranoia you have to embrace in order to keep all of the people that you've handled issuances for in compliance when, yeah. like at the whim of the regulators in 50 different countries. That's what we have to do, yeah. Oh my lord, that's <laughs> impressive. So, okay, so where do you think we're going with, you're talking about you guys are seeing movement in, in institutions. Where do you think we're going in 2019 in terms of adoption from the institutional side? Yeah, I think uh, the, the world of securities is very complex. There's a lot of different licenses you need to do different things. Uh, I think the, the, the good sign is uh, when it comes to institutions, they already have the regulatory cover to do a lot of these things. They can take a more sandbox approach mm -hmm. and start with experiments and then go larger. Right. And so I think it's, it's a lot of figuring out what all the pieces are for the institutions to continue to do business as usual, but perhaps augment it with additional products. Got it. Be sure to check out the full interview with Mason on our website. Tokensoft is a gold corporate member of the Security Token Academy. To learn more, go to our website, securitytokenacademy.com, and click on the directory tab and the corporate member homepage. We want to remind our viewers that if you have any questions about security tokens, be sure to email us, and we could answer them right here on a future episode of Security Token Insight. The address is insight at securitytokenacademy.com. Be sure to include your name with your question. One more time, the address is insight at securitytokenacademy.com. Did you know that you can get the latest industry updates in our free weekly newsletter, the Security Token Edge? The newsletter is packed full of insightful information about the security token industry. To subscribe and get your free weekly edition, go to our website, securitytokenacademy.com. We also invite you to check out the digital wrapper on Medium. It's our new behind the scenes series with the teams building out the security token industry. These are in-depth interviews covering a wide variety of topics. You can view them when you follow us on Medium. You can find more information on our website, securitytokenacademy.com. In a first of its kind multi-city webinar on tokenization of commercial real estate, 
CREST, a project of the Security Token Academy, provided a detailed case study on the tokenization of the St. Regis Aspen Resort. Learn how the webinar explored the disruptive forces that are emerging in commercial real estate, or CRE financing. Here is your preview. Disruption in commercial real estate has been appearing in lots of different ways. Certainly in the office category of commercial real estate, also known as CRE, the appearance of co-working companies such as WeWork is a major new trend. Also, the appearance of technology companies that strive to improve property operating efficiency through prop tech or property technology is another area of CRE disruption. But there's a new type of disruption emerging in the area of CRE financing. It's a way to raise money via a new solution which is compliant with US SEC regulations. It's called tokenization, and it is based on security tokens. This wave is barely just beginning, but examples are starting to emerge, and that's why we're here today as we cover the tokenization of the St. Regis Aspen Resort. I wanted to help our viewers take a closer look at this iconic hotel. So while I was there, I had the opportunity to meet with the hotel's general manager, Heather Steinhardt. Let's take a look at what she had to say. This is a gorgeous property. Can you tell me a bit about it? I'd love to. We have 179 guest rooms, 30 suites. This is a, one of our three specialty suites. And then we also have 25 residences, two and three bedrooms, which our fractional ownership has. Fantastic. What else should we know about this property? Well, the rooms and our public spaces were designed by Lauren Rote, um, and she was wanting to make sure that we're bringing the outside light into the hotel, um, that it was like a mountainside manor, that it was contemporary yet very, very comfortable because when after you go skiing, you just want to <laughs> chill relax. And relax. Yeah. And so I think she really did a lovely job in, in portraying those goals overall. Regarding this specific property, you had the listing at JLL and sold it to Stefan in Elevated Returns. What, what's the backstory on that? Yeah, in 2010, we had the uh, property on the market uh, and uh, we had reached out to um, a number of uh, offshore investors and uh, had got, gotten in touch with Updasia. We had been in touch with them on previous um, transactions before uh, and we sold the uh, we sold the asset to to Optasia and Stefan in uh, 2010 and the 19 million dollars of tokens that were raised what were those funds used for well I mean that was a return of capital to the owner so effectively the tokenization is a true sale of ownership into the property so the current owner uh, decided that the maximum they were willing to give away at that valuation was 18.9%. So that's what we put for sale and we were happy enough to fill up the entire stack. So the way that it works is that you actually sell the property into an operating partnership. You create REIT shares interest out of the partnership and you capitalize the REIT through uh, the sale of smart contract. Smart contract is effectively a, digi a digital share certificate. So rather than to have the old fashioned paper share certificate, you have a digital form of it. It's a beautiful instrument because all the securities regulation are actually embedded into the contract itself. And it's cheaper, it's faster to transact, and it offers also the ability to have a global product trading on multiple exchanges. We got involved with Elevated Returns, first helping Stefan in trying to liquefy in a different format, in a registered format, a traditional listed uh, REIT format, the St. Regis Aspen, and then helped him transition his project to a, a tokenized solution. Prior to helping Stefan, we've also been very active in the whole idea of, of creating liquidity around non-traditional liquidity solutions around single asset real estate. And so it was a natural for us to help Elevated Returns and Stefan with their project. Everything is going to get tokenized. Yes. Your identity will be tokenized, your title will be tokenized, your mortgage will be tokenized, your equity will be tokenized. I mean, that is the future when everything is running on this integrated, efficient, immutable blockchain system. To watch the full webinar, just go to crest.io to register. Registration is free.
Back in October, the Security Token Academy held events around the nation to signal the kickoff of the security token industry. We held security token meetups in Los Angeles and also in New York City. Attendees who purchased tickets to our two-day cruise and conference in New York boarded the Spirit of New York yacht from Chelsea Harbor for an evening cruise along the Hudson River. That was followed by the security token industry launch event inside the Conrad, New York. Hundreds of people were in attendance as industry leaders rang the opening bell to signal the official kickoff to the security token industry. To view all of the videos from Security Token Industry Launch Week, go to our website, securitytokenacademy.com, click on the Events tab, and select Launch Event Video Library. The best part? It's free and contains a wealth of information. All right, that's it for today's episode. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Telegram, and Medium. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page so you don't miss out on any of our videos and expert interviews. I'm Amy Wan. And I'm Adam Chapnick. And before we go, a big thank you to our Platinum Corporate member, Merrill Lynch, and all of our Gold Corporate members as well. We invite you to learn more about our corporate members by clicking on the directory page of our website. For everyone here at Security Token Academy, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our free weekly newsletter, The Security Token Edge. It's your weekly recap of the best breaking news and updates from the security token industry. Learn more and subscribe at securitytokenacademy.com.